What is codependency? If you're struggling in your relationships and you want to know if you have those behaviors, then you want to listen to this. So don't go anywhere, all right? Stay put. Now, there are a lot of different factors and behaviors and thinking that I'm not going to touch on today because there's a lot of information with regard to this. So remember, everything I share is completely general and don't go diagnosing yourself, all right? You know, it's good to be aware of these things. And if you find that you are feeling like these might apply to you, then that's where I would encourage you to talk to therapists, okay? Right then. Moving on. My name is Keish Martin, and yes, it is Martin, not being pretentious. I just don't put the little accent mark on it. And I'm a licensed therapist. And if you're new and just stopping by, hi and hola. On this channel, I do my very best to give you guys some concrete, helpful tools and information that might help you on your path and your journey of self-improvement. Also, I like to toss in a little humor here and there. So if you're looking to learn and laugh from time to time, then you're in the right spot. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. So let me get to it. What is codependency? Codependency is characterized by a person whose behavior and thinking is centered around another person. And oftentimes that person that they're focused on suffers from some kind of addiction, poor mental health, irresponsibility, maybe even some immaturity and underachievement or all of the above. What are some signs you might ask? Am I codependent? Oh my gosh, that sounds like something that might apply to me. Fair not. That's what therapy's for. You can get some help to break free from some of these cycles if you recognize any of the following signs. Feeling responsible for another person's problems. Somebody does something wrong, somebody makes a mistake, somebody gets drunk and stupid at a party. You internalize that problem as something that was within your control and that you could have stopped and that there was something that you were responsible for or maybe even something that has caused that person to do that thing. A person that has these kinds of tendencies is going to feel overly responsible for the success or the failure of the relationship. And so they're likely going to be reflecting on what they can do to make it better or they might feel really bad if an argument happens without considering the fact that that other person has a responsibility in the dynamics of the relationship. As we all know, that would not be the case. A person is always responsible for their own behaviors and their own thinking and all the things. But due to how a codependent was likely raised or the environment that they grew up in, they internalized people's problems and behaviors as their own. Going back to the example of substance abuse, if their significant other begins using again or uses excessively, they might blame themselves or take responsibility for that person acting out based on maybe something completely irrelevant or making assumptions that they didn't do enough to stop that person from doing the thing, right? So that's another thing that you need to look out for. Right then, side note, oftentimes in these dynamics, there is some kind of form of toxic behaviors or patterns in the relationship. And not being able to identify these patterns can definitely leave you vulnerable to those kinds of dynamics. So with that being said, that brings me to a pretty clear indicator of codependency, which is denial, okay? Now, denial is typically at the center of a pattern of unhealthy, behaviors. And so denial keeps that wheel going around. So as long as a person's stuck in denial, guess what? They're going to be stuck in pattern. For instance, a person with codependent behaviors and thinking might be in denial about their significant other's substance abuse. They might minimize, ignore, dismiss the behaviors that others would see as something that would be destructive. And a large reason why they may do this is because they want to hold on to their relationship because they're finding their worth and their identity in that. As you might know, that doesn't sound very healthy, does it? Well, it's not. Our self-worth needs to come from within and we need to have our own identity and we have to be able to function and enjoy life and all the things without having someone else need us to feel fulfilled within ourselves. So that's another sign you might wanna look out for. Now here's another one. One that will likely leave you vulnerable to people that would take advantage of you or people that might have something like narcissistic personality disorder, for instance, or borderline personality disorder, is not being able to say no. You go ahead and do things that you're not comfortable with to avoid conflict. Having little or no boundaries whatsoever. Being enmeshed emotionally. That person might have a difficult time saying no because they're afraid, again, of that person rejecting them or abandoning them. And they're also real people pleasers. So they might quiet their voice, ignore what they feel and what they want or what they need in an effort to maintain that relationship. An example might be 
sexual intimacy, engaging in sexual acts that you're not comfortable with because you're trying to please that other person or avoid conflict and the whole abandonment thing. And Lloyd knows that we need to learn how to say no, okay? No is a beautiful thing. It just kind of rolls right off the tongue once you get used to saying it. So that's something you wanna look out for, all right? If you find yourself uncomfortable, don't ignore that discomfort, all right? Your feelings are trying to tell you something, okay? You need to listen, right? So, another thing to keep in mind. Also, is there anything a therapist might be able to help you identify and give you tools to work on? I have a few more signs for you, so you wanna stick it out and get that information, but before I do, if you find this content helpful, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Right now, right then, enough of that. Moving on. Another key indicator is if you don't feel safe sharing what you feel. And this, again, can go back to your history, your patterns and relationships previously, childhood on thing. If you have not been encouraged to vocalize how you feel or to discuss your feelings, you're uncomfortable with your feelings, you don't feel internally safe with your emotions, it's really difficult to feel like you can share them with other people. Now, an unfortunate piece of this is that because of those kinds of things, like I said before, you might be vulnerable to people that suffer from narcissistic personality disorder or borderline personality disorder, right? And so they're likely gonna be doing things that's just gonna reinforce that feeling of being unsafe, right? Because if you've had any experience with those types, is that they oftentimes rage when you try to set boundaries or when you try to express how you feel, they hold you in contempt. And so that's something to be mindful of. You know, if you find yourself in these patterns, these destructive patterns, then you really need to take a look and take a step back and be like, all right, who am I? What is it I need? What is it I want? What is it I feel? How can I go about making sure that I feel safe emotionally and healing some of the things that might have caused me to have these kinds of patterns? Another big indicator is tied to the one I just previously talked about, which is being unsure of what you need. You're so focused on other people, you got a pattern of that, maybe a long history of that, and so you learn to suppress your needs, your wants, all the things, and so when someone asks you what you might need, you may not have the answer. And not having that answer would make it very difficult to be able to say no and to set those boundaries, right? And so doing a lot of self-exploration, self-reflection, connecting with yourself can probably help you learn how to define those things and learn where you need to set boundaries. Another part of that is if they're a codependent person or someone that demonstrates those kinds of behaviors or thinking, if they do try to say no, if they do connect with themselves and they're like, ooh, this doesn't feel good, and they try to set those boundaries, they start to feel excessive, unreasonable guilt and shame. And that could result in continuing certain patterns and behaviors. Like if you feel excessive guilt, you might find that you're compromising yourself in other situations because of that guilt, such as making excuses for a person, minimizing their actions and things because you feel guilty about trying to set those boundaries. Now, another big piece of this is a need for control, all right? And the reason why people that have these kind of patterns might feel the need to control other people and what they do and all the things is because they don't feel in control of what they feel. They've been so focused on other people, they've disconnected from their feelings. They may not know what they feel, as I said before. And as a result, their emotions being out of control, you know, they might look outside themselves to try to control things so that they can feel better. So sometimes it's kind of a soothing thing to focus on other people and it's a distraction from dealing with all those uncomfortable feelings, likely from previous experiences throughout life and in childhood. So that's one sign of codependent behavior. If you see this particular one, then it's like a bullhorn, all right? This is the huge red flag within yourself or if you see it in someone else. Remember how I said people who might be codependent struggle with compromising themselves too much or doing things that make them uncomfortable in order to maintain the relationship? Well, because they're going above and beyond, because they're doing all these things, they might harbor resentment, anger, frustration at the person that they're doing all this for because they're not feeling validated or acknowledged for all the things that they are doing, right? So they have this rescuer thing mentality. They're like, I'm saving this person, I'm doing all these good things, and they're not acknowledging it. And a good example of that could be like someone holding the door open for a bunch of people to go through, even if nobody asked them to do it, even though they're perfectly capable of opening the door themselves and then get pissed off because nobody thanked them, okay? And so this is where it is important for a person to connect with themselves, 
to take care of themselves, to have their own identity, to be aware of these things so that they can check this, right? Because that's a pretty miserable life to lead, right? Doing all the things, sacrificing yourself, nobody noticing, invalidating you, all the things. I mean, who wants something like that? Seriously. So if that sounds like something you're struggling with, then what am I going to say? You know what I'm going to say. Talk to a therapist. Another big sign, which is pretty much tied into a lot of what I said so far, is just not being able to do things alone, not feeling comfortable being alone, right? I mean, it could be as simple as going to the store alone, having a cup of coffee alone, going to a movie alone. That could be another sign that, you know, you might have some of these patterns, right? We all need to be able to learn how to be comfortable in our own skin, what we feel, and enjoying our own company, okay? And focusing on that, being able to be content and happy and find your sense of worth internally is a very liberating and empowering experience. And once you're able to do that, you're able to see when something is not okay for you, something that's potentially toxic or already is toxic. And once you recognize that, that's where you gotta learn how to keep yourself accountable not to fall into these patterns again. So if you've noticed any of these signs or you've recognized any of these patterns, you've become aware of this, then now's your time. You can learn how to say no, you can keep yourself safe, you can set those boundaries, and you can kick somebody to the curb that isn't worth your time and energy who it might be sucking you dry. So that's something to be aware of, you know? You gotta fill your own cup before you can be helping anybody else. And it's important to realize that sometimes people don't want you to fill their cup, and that's totally okay. One of the reasons why it's important to identify this or to be aware of this is like i said you do not want to leave yourself vulnerable to people that would take advantage of someone that has a pretty big heart and oftentimes that is the case with people that have these kinds of patterns and behaviors not always but oftentimes it is and unfortunately there are a lot of people out there that are destructive and toxic and would use all of those excessive feelings of guilt um, that lack of um, feelings of self-worth or value and identity to bend and mold to get to what they need or want. And you don't want that, all right? It's awful. It doesn't feel good. Now, I'm gonna give you a piece of insight here that maybe might resonate with you and might spark you to do some reflection. If you continue to take responsibility for other people's behaviors, patterns, all the things, that person is never going to learn how to do things on their own. They're not gonna take responsibility because they have you there to take responsibility. And so in order to get there, you know, you gotta learn how to connect with yourself, like I was saying, understand what you're feeling and your emotions so that you don't feel the need to control that other person, right? And you can take a step back and see, okay, this is what I'm responsible for, and that's what that person is responsible for. And I'm not going to take that on and basically understand when something is just not your problem, okay? You're not responsible for another person's behavior, another person's thoughts, another person's feelings, okay? Let's just be clear. Keep that in mind if you're working on this stuff. If you notice it and you're in therapy and maybe you haven't discussed this with your therapist, then make sure you do that. And if you're not in therapy, go to therapy. I can also recommend the book Codependent No More. That can be very helpful in trying to recover from these kinds of dynamics. Now, I'm not gonna say that it's easy, all right? It's going to be an ongoing thing that you have to challenge yourself to confront. But with practice and with exercise, you can do it. So, I believe in you, okay? Believe in yourself, you can do this. Now, I'll be sharing some more information on this topic periodically, but I will try to stick to my content schedule as per your request. And if you have any more questions or you would like to hear my thoughts on a particular topic, then let me know. And until next time, be well, be strong, and be loved.